So, moving right along. Oh, does this turn off by itself? Oh no, okay, here we go. Question comes up, can a gas be poured? We know liquids can be poured, but can a gas be poured? So, high-tech equipment I've got here, folks. Look at this. We're talking some cut-off soda bottles. <laughs> I use them a lot. <laughs> and I just asked for baking soda, and I was expecting some old ratty box of, you know, value time baking soda, or maybe Arm & Hammer if they really splurge. But no, this is sodium bicarbonate. Okay. Very carefully measured out. Here we go. And a splash of vinegar. This is more than enough. <laughs> okay. There we go. Ooh. Look at that. Evidence of a chemical reaction there, right? A gas has evolved. Can I say I've evolved here in Texas? Is that okay? Okay. I'm, I'm assuming that's <laughs> fair game. I'm saying it anyway, by golly. That gas evolved. <laughs> okay. So, here's a question. Does anyone know what gas that is? CO2, we got a chemistry teacher over there. Okay, that's right. Now, being a gas, where do you suppose that carbon dioxide is by now? Out of the air, because I'm going like this and intentionally misleading you all? Good. <laughs> Let's find out if you're right, <laughs> okay? I have here an identical cut-up bottle, but I haven't done anything. This is my control, and I have here a high-tech CO2 detector also called a candle on a coat hanger, okay? <laughs> and if I can, ah, good thing I have another one of these. So we're gonna lower this candle down into this bottle. You're saying you didn't put anything in there. I know, that's our control. And by doing so, we confirm that lowering a candle into a cutoff soda bottle does not in and of itself do anything. <laughs> Burns in there, just like it burns out here. But, is it still in here? Let's find out. Aha! So why is that, you ask? Well, of course, CO2 is considerably denser than air, about 50% more dense. So it's kind of sitting down there, almost as though it were a liquid. It is, by the way, a fluid. That's something some people don't realize. Fluid incorporates both, anything that can flow is a fluid. Gases and liquids are fluids. So. If it's sitting down there like a liquid, do you suppose I could pour it from one container to the next? See, there was a reason I had this here. Let's find out if you can, okay? And I'm hoping the air currents aren't gonna be an issue here, but I'm gonna kind of block it here just in case. Ooh, I spilled a little. I'll clean that up later. <laughs> and the reason I left these bottles curved like this is so I could tip that bottle all the way sideways and still have none of the liquid go across. Because if the liquid poured across, you could argue, well, that just produced some CO2 on the other side. So here we go. Let's see if I've actually succeeded. And I am going to have to deal with an air current across here a bit today, so there's a bit of a breeze. Um, do I have any left in here? Do I have any? Little bit near the bottom. Little bit near the bottom. But I think most of it got transferred into here. Let's see if it did. Did it make it there? Oh, yes, it did. So, kind of cool. So let me empty this out. <laughs> okay. You laugh, but. And I'm going to generate a fresh batch, because if a little is good, more is better. And how did I know that I didn't have to add any more baking soda? Because I saw a pile of it sitting at the bottom. A little limiting reactant problem there, right? Okay. Let me confirm that I have a good tank of CO2 here? Okay, I do. So you just saw that a gas can be poured. Can a gas be siphoned? Your students will not know what a siphon is. Maybe some of you don't. It's a very tricky piece of equipment here called a tube. And I'm going to put this in there, not quite down the liquid, because that would be, I'm just trying to transfer the gas. Um, and it wouldn't be very tasty either. So I'm going <coughs> to. Yeah, you have to prime the pump there with the siphon. And now I have to stall a little bit. So these two sodium atoms are walking down the road. <laughs> and all of a sudden one says, I lost an electron. The other one says, are you sure? The first one says, yeah, I'm positive. <laughs> OK. You hear about the electron that uh, burped as he dropped from one energy level to the next? He did so very discreetly. I just, okay. 
Yeah, that's a little bit more subtle. Okay. I think that's enough stalling. It's discreetly, what the heck? Okay. And now, let's see. Oh, I forgot to show you that that was indeed empty, but you saw me turn upside down. Did I get all? I don't think my two jokes got all of it siphoned out. I think I still got maybe about a third of a tank here. Yep, yep, see that? Nicely calibrated job there. Okay, here we go. And, but did I actually manage to siphon into here? Maybe about a third of it in there? Aha, very nice. So after they've done all that where they're seeing it, well, they're not really seeing it, they're seeing it in their mind's eye, they're trying to visualize what that CO2 looks like. Why not show them what that CO2 looks like? I have here, if you have access to this, a little bit of dry ice. And I'm gonna just show you this demonstration real quickly again, because I got a lot more I wanna show you. So just pretend this is water in here now, okay? And this lets us see the CO2. <laughs> Well, it's actually coloring the CO2 with mist. What you're seeing there is not CO2. Carbon dioxide is invisible, colorless. Um, I'd say odorless, but has anyone ever tried smelling CO2? Try that sometimes. It gives you a stinging sensation in your nose like soda, you know, that carbonation. So that was what was going on. And then you saw me lower the candle in there, it went out, and then I poured it. And I really did. <laughs> you see the breeze I got to deal with here? You see that? And then I emptied it, and I really held it there for a while to make sure it all was out. Oop. And then you saw me, in the second part of the demonstration, siphon it, right? <laughs> okay? And it does take a while, but if you can, can you zoom in on the bottom one there, and you can see this nice little layer of carbon dioxide gradually forming there. And it takes a while. Those two jokes were really necessary. I'm sorry, they were. <laughs> Check this out. What's going to happen now? Just like water, it'll siphon back, okay? It is, if you kind of look at it there. So, that's kind of weird that you can siphon a gas, because you might have thought siphoning had something to do with the, the molecules needing to stick to each other. Strong in molecular forces, it really doesn't. It's atmospheric pressure pushing it. So, there it is. That was the uh, pouring of gas. Of course, the other thing you can do, I'm just going to segue into my next demo, which I'm moving over here for. You can, of course, pour it directly onto a flame. It's not. I, I like the, you know, I wonder if he poured it. Hmm, we'll find out with the candle afterward. But if you want the immediate feedback, immediate gratification, I can just pour it on there. Now, for this demonstration, though, I'm going to try pouring a different gas. So I'm going to relight this. I'm going to relight this. It's because I got a nice breeze in here. If I didn't have the breeze going across that beaker, I could do that 10 times and it would keep going out as I go into that beaker because that CO2 is still sitting in there. But with the breeze blowing across it, it took it out pretty quickly. But I, I wasn't, I and mean, it really did go out the first time because this also requires oxygen. Um, there are two gases up there. I've already poured the one on the left, the CO2. The one on the right, hexane. I'm gonna try pouring that. I've got liquid hexane here in this flask, but I'm not interested in liquid. I want to pour the vapors. It's volatile. That has several meanings, but right now I mean it evaporates quickly. So this flask is filled with those hexane vapors. If it's not too breezy, I might be able to do this whole way. If not, I'm going to shorten my ramp here, okay? Let's see if I can put that flame out all the way from back here. I didn't have success with this as I was warming up because it's just too windy. So. What I ended up doing was shortening my ramp. <laughs> Isn't that fancy there? Okay. We'll try it now. And if this still doesn't work, I have another backup plan. You always have to have backup plans. Is it going to put it out? Okay. So here's the backup. We have a little screen down here. This wasn't part of the original procedure, so, but it is now. 
That is just to serve as a little wind block there, because I want to see if I can't pour that flame out, okay? Pour that candle out. Swirl a little bit to get some more vapors there, whoops. Okay, and here we go. Do I still have too much wind here? Okay, we're doing the really short version here. In my classroom, it could be like a 10 foot long rank because there's no air blowing there at all, okay? Whoa. Can the, I don't know if you can hit the lights. We have the flame in the bottle for a while and then it goes out because it runs out of oxygen. So this did not put the flame out. <laughs> Instead, it goes right up the ramp like that. And um, let's see if I can do that one more time here. There's what I meant to do. Pull it away. And if I don't pull it away, a little flame in the bottle for a short while, OK? So there's nothing to get alarmed about with this as long as you keep your cool and realize, I'm just going to hold the bottle like this. So a little safety lesson there on volatile gases and, and how if they're dense enough, they can actually travel down a ramp. Oops. Ugh. Vinegar, yeah, OK. So what's the important lesson to be learned here? Because my students like to call that one the invisible river of death. They get really dramatic about that. This. <laughs> but it got me thinking. This is, this is what I'm talking about, how I can my philosophy of teaching, what that is with that demonstration right there. So these two gases, lesson for teachers, the effect that you have on your students may be imperceivable at first, but be aware that this effect runs deep and it has the potential to ignite at any time. We're planting seeds and you won't, you won't necessarily see the, the outcome of that. That's okay, it's invisible, but it runs deep. Teachers affect eternity. They can never tell where their influence stops. Okay? So that's um, called the flaming vapor ramp. As I say, you could also call it the invisible river of death. 